You know, most people just start using Photoshop right out of the box and they don't set it up properly. Right now, I'm going to give you seven tips that's going to make Photoshop faster and more efficient. And then I'm going to give you a fix all at the very end that's going to show you how to fix 99% of the problems you're ever going to have inside of Photoshop. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com and today I'm going to give you seven tips that's going to make Photoshop run lightning fast and buttery smooth. Now I say seven tips, there's probably going to be more, but let's get started. All right, so here we are inside of Photoshop and we're going to go into the preferences. So we're going to choose Photoshop preferences. Now on the Mac, it's right there. On Windows, I believe it's under file or edit. I, I forget. Let me know in the comments. All right, so let's go down right now. And the first thing we're going to go to is general. So see this big screen that we've got going every time we open Photoshop and whenever we close a document, this big screen comes up. This is the welcome screen. If we click here to disable the home screen and click OK and restart Photoshop, that screen is now gone and we're in our regular Photoshop. Maybe you like that screen. If that's the case, then just turn off, disable the home screen and it will go back. Same thing goes for that new document interface. If you've been using Photoshop for any amount of time, you might have noticed that new document window suddenly became this huge screen that took over the entire screen. You can also turn that on or off if you like by just simply clicking here and use legacy new document interface. And now it will go to the same one that it's always had before. I got to admit the new one is kind of growing on me. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go down to file handling. Under file handling, let's go all the way to the bottom. And it says the recent file list contains 20 files. That means if we choose file open recent, you can see the last 20 files that you've opened. Now, what if you're looking for something that you created before then? We can change this up to 100. So most of the time when you change preferences, it's going to require a Photoshop restart for those preferences to take effect. In this case, we don't have to restart. If we choose File, Open, Recent, now you see the last 100 is showing, and that makes it so much easier to find the image you're looking for. The next category we're going to look at is Performance. There's a couple of things I like to change in here. One of them is I like to change the available RAM to about 80%. Now, the reason I choose 80% is I want to leave a little overhead for, you know, drivers like Wacom drivers and things like that to run in the background. Also, if you're doing multitasking, you might be running other applications. You want to save a little bit of RAM for them. If you're only ever using Photoshop and nothing else, you could push that up to maybe 90% and it just gives you a little bit more RAM to play with. 80% is a good number that I like to use. Now, there's a couple of other things. Now, here's a troubleshooting issue. If you ever have problems with the display where things are just not displaying right, things just look weird, they're broken, different things like that, a lot of the time that can be fixed by turning off the GPU. And then if you see that that fixes it, what you want to do is go back in here again and then click on advanced settings and turn off these options one at a time until you can find a culprit. And that will fix pretty much all of your display issues. So recently I did a video where we were looking at different new features in CC 2019 and blend modes. And I had a bunch of comments from people saying, hey, I had issues with the blend modes. They're not displaying correctly on my computer. Photoshop is broken. Well, actually, here's how you can fix that. If you turn on legacy compositing, what it does is it uses the older compositing engine. CC 2019 and new compositing engine came in. So if things don't look right, things are not working right, turn that on and that will solve those problems. The next one is scratch disk. Now, this is something a lot of people don't understand, and it's super important. What happens with Photoshop is when you're working on a file, Photoshop needs about 10 times the size of that file in order to do all the processing and different things like that. So it can very quickly run out of RAM. When Photoshop runs out of RAM, it moves those process to the hard drive and starts processing on that hard drive. If you've only got one hard drive set, like I do here, and it's full or very close to full, performance is going to become sluggish. And you might try to run a filter and you might see some warning saying scratch disk is full. So here's what you want to do is you want to apply more than one disk. 
and then you want to check them. So if that disk is full, Photoshop can use more than one disk there and it's not going to run out of memory. So here's a tip. If you want to get the best performance possible, install a second drive. Make it an SSD, which is a solid state drive. Don't boot off it. Don't have all your programs running on it. Just use it for Photoshop. Attach that and then make that your scratch disk. And if you do that, you're going to get the best performance. So what you want to do is you want to set your primary scratch disk as the fastest drive that you have that has free space. And then from there on, you can add other scratch disks going from your fastest to your slowest. But if you've got really slow drives, don't use those because it's just going to slow things down. All right, so here's two images. I've seen people do this. They select an image, hit Control A, Control C. So they have a select all, C for copy, go into the next one and Control V to paste it in. This is a really bad way of working. And I'll tell you why. Because when you copy something, it goes into the clipboard and it takes up memory. When you paste it, it doesn't clear it out of the pasteboard. It's still in there. So let me show you. If I open up the layers panel here and I go in here and I hit Control V, notice it's pasting more than one layer in because that's still in the clipboard. So a better way of working is to just click and drag that in. Now, if you're not working on the two windows and you're in a tab like this, what you do is just click and drag up into the tab and then go down and release. And now what that's doing is that's copying it over there, but it's not putting it in the clipboard. So it's not taking up memory. Now, the next tip I'm going to give you kind of relates to that. Have you ever been working and you try to run a filter and you're just out of resources and then Photoshop will throw an error and tell you it's out of resources or it can't do it. Not enough memory is usually the error message you get. So here's what you can do. If you go under edit and go down to purge, under purge, we have some options here. Clipboard, that will clear everything in your clipboard, which will be the last document you cut and pasted. The other option is history. So history, what that is, is that's your memory. So each step you do, Photoshop remembers it so it can undo it. If you're at a place right now where you need those system resources, you know you don't have to undo where you are, then use your histories. So a lot of the time, I'll just go in here and I'll just click all, and then it will tell you it can't be undone because it's going to throw everything out of memory. Click OK. All your memory is freed up now so you can close that document, save that document, run that filter, whatever it is that you need to do. So right now I'm going to show you the fix all, which is resetting your preferences. Now it used to be you had to dig around and try and find a preferences file, but now you don't have to do that. It's much easier inside of Photoshop. So when you reset the preferences, what you're doing is you're just clearing everything out, resetting it to factory settings. And by doing that, it fixes most of the problems or issues you have. I heard people were having issues with the last version. Resetting the preferences actually fixed those because it could be a bad preset or a preference is set wrong or something like that or things just jammed up. And by resetting your preferences, you're getting Photoshop nice and clean again. It's a better alternative to uninstalling and reinstalling. So I would back up those presets first before resetting the preferences. Now I'm going to show you how to do that. Is you want to go under here, go under presets, and then import export presets. So we're going to click on there. And any custom presets that you've made here, you can select them there and you can export them. In this case, I don't have a lot. Let's quit out of Photoshop. Now we're going to go to launch Photoshop again. But before we do, we want to hold down shift option command on Mac and at shift alt control on Windows. And now we're going to click on Photoshop to launch it. We're going to get this dialog that asks if it wants to delete the settings file. Click yes. It's going to delete it. But don't worry, as Photoshop launches, it's going to build a brand new one which is going to res reset it to the factory settings. And that will fix almost every problem you have in Photoshop without having to uninstall or reinstall or call tech support. I would definitely recommend try resetting your preferences file first. Most of the time that's going to resolve your issue. So anyway, guys, I got a question for you. Out of all of these tips, what was your favorite one? Let me know in the comments underneath. And also were these new to you or did you know some of them already? I'd love to know. And if you like Photoshop tutorials and you want to become a master of Photoshop, hit the subscribe button right now. Become part of the cafe crew and every single week you'll get a new tutorial from me. Make sure you ring that little notification bell 
so you know when I upload, which is usually every Tuesday, but sometimes I also do bonus videos throughout the week. So anyway, if you like this, smash that like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.